Evolutionary dance of rap eras, some labeled as trash in their infancy, only to become familiar grooves over time. Now, let's dive into the time machine and explore how one individual can wield the power to reshape an entire era. Our protagonist in this lyrical odyssey? None other than Playboy Cardi, the maestro of a sound that once dwelled in the shadows but now commands the mainstream stage. Picture this, a rap landscape dominated by the intricate wordplay of the 90s, where every verse felt like a lyrical labyrinth. Critics might dub it the worst era, a lyrical miracle maze that divided opinions. Yet with each era's end comes a phoenix, and Carti emerges as the harbinger of change. Fast forward to the birth of Carti's sonic revolution. His sound, once a hidden gem, now thrives in the mainstream spotlight. But rewind, and you'll find the origins of this musical metamorphosis. Join me as we unravel the threads of Carti's journey, witnessing the sparks that ignited a shift from the underground to the mainstream. The sweet nostalgia of the SoundCloud era, where Lil Pump, Trippy Red, and Smoke Perp reigned supreme, basking in the glory of the 2016 freshman list. Those were the golden days, the moments I immersed myself in the rap universe, tracking the beats and personas that defined an era. Yet, rewind the clock a bit further, just before the surge of these iconic names, and you'll find the undertones of what was to come, the SoundCloud days, a prelude, if you will, to the glorious chaos that ensued sued. Picture it, the dark trap vibes resonating with artists like Suicide Boys, XXX Tentacion, Night Level, Bones, and Ghost Domain. Dark lyrics intertwined with ominous beats, a soundscape birthed from the influence of Space Ghost Perp and Raider Clan, evolving into the multifaceted realm of metal trap. This era, this XXL fresh, XXL fresh breath of air, stood in stark contrast to the preceding sounds that witnessed AAP Rocky's explosive ascent just four years prior. It's what I fondly dub as the 2015 popular sound of rap a transformative phase that set the stage for the emergence of new legends and the unforgettable echoes of SoundCloud brilliance. Now in what I refer to as the emo rap era, an extension of the SoundCloud era, a distinct style emerged, heavily influenced by artists like Ghost Domain and Suicide Boys. While rooted in the SoundCloud movement, it evolved with its own characteristics. Lil Peep, a prominent figure, released his first EP, Feels, in 2015, followed by the mixtapes Lil Peep Part 1 and Live Forever. His fourth and final solo mixtape, Hellboy, released in September 2016, marked a significant success with songs like Girls and OMFG, gaining millions of views on platforms like SoundCloud and YouTube. Despite his alternative sound, unique appearance, and a solo tour in 2017, Lil Peep's career faced challenges, and his untimely death left the question of whether his distinctive guitar-based sound would have reached mainstream success. One year later, Juice merged, proving that emo rap could indeed go mainstream, shaping the subsequent era of melodic rap with emo undertones. This trend led to various artists attempting to replicate the styles of Juice Lil Peep, while the subsequent era, represented by Playboy Cardi, unfolded with its own dynamics, albeit without the tragic fate faced by some of its predecessors. <laughs> Now some people say Playboy Cardi was mainstream long before with first project self-titled Playboy Cardi. With so many people copying his sound with the Playboy Cardi type beats, or even when he first started using baby voice on his album Dial It. But I'm more so talking about whole lot of red era, how every underground rapper started copying his aesthetic and his sound with it. What I mean by his sound finally going mainstream is... His whole lot of red sound going mainstream, especially the beats and rappers, using a similar flow pocket. Look at artists like Yate, who started off using whole lot of red type beats on Up To M, with Yeet's highest first week sale being 54k, which in my opinion is mainstream, and not to mention his label Signees who use a similar pocket and sound with Ken Carson and Destroy Lonely, both selling well into the mainstream realm. 
With Ken Carson a great chaos selling 46k first week and Destroy Lonely selling 29k first week.